Halloween celebrations are in full swing in Disney World with new events and so many snacks. Space 220 may finally be opening soon in Epcot and parades are returning to Disney World for the holidays. We also have park hour updates and ride changes that may affect your next trip. So stay tuned to all the latest updates from the Disney parks. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. This is my favorite part of the week. I get to record your weekly roundup of Disney news here, and it is officially fall at Disney World. Today we are covering all the new snacks, merchandise you can find during the Halloween season, because why celebrate on just one day when you can celebrate for three whole months? Plus, more extended park hours and a shockingly bright spaceship Earth, along with what we hope is the last projected opening date for Space 220. Let's get started. Boo Bash has begun. Yeah, Magic Kingdom's Halloween After Hours Boo Bash event kicked off this week. This is a replacement for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And we were there opening night to cover the snacks, character cavalcades, and answer the most important question, is it worth it? We have a full recap video about the brand new pricey event, so check that out before you shell out the nearly $200 per ticket to attend. All right, another holiday after hours event is right around the corner. Disney's very merriest after hours event will run November 8th through December 21st, 2021. There are 24 party nights, including weekends and weekdays for the four hour event that will run from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Tickets will range in price from $169 to $229 plus tax. For select nights in November and December with December 19th and 21st, priced at $249 plus tax per person. Annual pass holders and Disney Vacation Club members will be able to get $10 off their tickets on select event nights in November. Mickey's Christmas Time Parade is returning for the event. This is the first parade to come back after the pandemic closures. You'll also be able to catch two fireworks shows. Disney Enchantment, the new Magic Kingdom fireworks show, will happen before park close. Plus, there will be holiday fireworks during the after hours event. Tickets will go on sale on August 20th. All right, here's that Space 220 news. Space 220 is a new immersive space-themed restaurant that was announced back in 2017, supposed to open fall 2019, then spring 2020, and now finally mid-September 2021. The Space 220 menu will feature a two-course prefix menu for lunch and a three-course prefix menu for dinner with modern upscale dishes, according to Disney. There will also be unique drinks like atmospheric cocktails. Now we'll keep you updated on if this restaurant finally stays on track with their new projected opening date. And more extended evening hours have been announced for Disney World. More dates have been added to the new extra hours perk available to guests staying at deluxe Disney resorts and deluxe villas starting this October. Extended evening hours allows those deluxe resort guests to have extra time to stay late in designated parks on designated days. As of right now, only Epcot and Magic Kingdom are participating. Disney's released the schedule through mid-October with extended park hours continuing at Epcot on Mondays and Magic Kingdom on Wednesdays. On those those nights, guests at those select hotels can spend an extra two hours in the parks after they close. And Spaceship Earth now has some really bright lights. We got our first look at the new lighting on Spaceship Earth for the 50th anniversary. We caught it a few nights ago from Coronado Springs Resort, where after midnight, Spaceship Earth lit up very brightly, and we mean very brightly. Coronado Springs is miles away from Epcot, and you couldn't miss those lights. Disney's confirmed that these lights are permanent and will stay after the 50th anniversary celebrations. Changes have been made at Disney World's Rider Switch program. Yep, if you're not familiar with Rider Switch, that's a service that Disney offers that comes in handy when you have some in your party who can't or don't want to ride something. Your party is split in two so that the person not riding doesn't have to wait alone. The first group waits in the standby line while one person waits with whoever isn't riding. When the first group gets off, the person who waited gets to ride using the Fast Pass line to cut down their wait time and they get to bring others with them, meaning some in your party can ride twice. Most of the time, this is used for little ones who do not make the height requirement. Disney's changed some of their language regarding the rider switch scenario though. The language no longer states that if the person in party two waited alone, they may bring up to two guests, but instead just states that the number who can join them is limited. You'll want to check with a cast member when you get your rider switch pass to see how many guests can join in that second party of riders. 
Liberty Square Riverboat is closing for refurbishment. Sometimes when you plan a trip to Disney World, you have to know that every now and then Disney's got to perform routine maintenance and a ride you expected to ride may be closed. Well, Liberty Square Riverboat will be closing for refurbishment starting Monday, August 23rd and will be closed until August 31st. This kind of refurbishment happens around the same time every year, so this isn't a surprise. But always keep an eye on the Disney World calendar to see if any refurbs line up with your next trip. There's nothing worse than a poor kiddo who doesn't get to ride their favorite ride because it's going down for scheduled maintenance and you didn't know about it. Okay, just a little heads up, buying masks in Disney World might be more difficult right now than it was before. Recently, Disney made the change where everyone must wear a mask in all indoor locations regardless of vaccination status. And we stopped by the Emporium in Magic Kingdom to find out that they were completely sold out of masks. A cast member said that because of the recent indoor mask policy, there's been a surge in mask purchases. We can only assume this will happen at stores all over Disney World as they were not prepared for the new mask policy and they had actually stopped ordering masks when Disney decided decided to not have masks any longer. However, disposable masks are available for purchase at the registers for $2. So if you're heading to Disney World soon, we suggest you bring plenty of masks from home if you don't want to purchase disposable ones at the parks at $2 a pop. Run Disney marathons are back in Disney World for the 2021-2022 season, and Disney just revealed the medals for the 2021 Wine and Dine Half Marathon races. The Wine and Dine Half Marathon will take place November 4th to the 7th, 2021, and this year's villain theme is Wicked evil. The evil queen Oogie Boogie Yzma and Ursula are featured on the medals for the 5k, 10k, half marathon, or the two course challenge. The Princess Half Marathon, February 24th to 27th, 2022, has also revealed its race themes. Mulan, Cinderella, Moana, and Tiana are the icons of those race events. Now the Swan Reserve is one of the newest hotels that will be coming soon to Disney World, and it's right next to the Swan and Dolphin Hotels. It was originally slated for a September 1st opening, but the new hotel has been delayed to late September. Guests who have reservations for the Swan Reserve that will be impacted by this delay will receive communication directly from the hotel regarding alternative options. And an opening date has been announced for a new Disneyland spa. The Tanaya Stone Spa was set to open spring of 2020 at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel in Disneyland. After lengthy delays, the spa will officially open on September 16th. Reservations are available now. And the Walt Disney Company held its quarter three earnings call this week to give an update on the current state of the company. The Disney Parks Experiences and Products Division showed profitable numbers for the first time since the pandemic began. Bob Chapek, Disney CEO, confirmed our suspicions that the parks have gotten a lot more crowded by sharing that during the third quarter of fiscal year 2021, attendance levels were at or near daily capacity levels, which increased throughout the quarter. Currently, park reservations are above the attendance levels they saw in Q3. And streaming continues to be a boon for the company, with Disney Plus boasting 116 million paid subscribers. On November 12th, 2021, the company will celebrate Disney Plus Day with an exciting lineup of an attractive group of titles to be announced. So Disney Plus Day that didn't exist before suddenly now exists, and Disney's going to give us a lot of new content, I guess. Now, the call briefly touched on Disney Genie, which is that new planning tool coming to Disney. Disney World that we haven't heard mentioned much lately. It's that online app thing. And according to Chapek, Genie will revolutionize the guest experience, combining consumer preferences with industrial engineering and data on how the park is operating that day to make suggestions on the fly. Very, very interesting and a lot of stuff meshing together to give you a great suggestion for what to do in the park. So we'll see. In restaurant and sack news, we've got some Halloween snacks. Now, Hollywood Studios released a ton of Halloween-themed snacks this past week, even more than you'll find at Magic Kingdom. You can catch up on all of those in our Boo Bash recap video. But over at Rosie's All-American Cafe in Hollywood Studios, you'll find the Witch's Hat Mousse for $5.49. It's made of whipped blackberry panna cotta, sitting on green apple mousse with salted caramel crispy pearls and a chocolate shortbread cookie. There's a lot of flavors going on there. The colors are fun, but this one is on the smaller side and is super messy. We were looking forward to it, but ultimately we're a little disappointed. There are much better options for Halloween eats in the park. 
The chocolate mousse over at ABC Commissary is made with a raspberry dark chocolate mousse, chocolate almond cake, a layer of hazelnut crunch, and whipped chocolate hazelnut cheesecake, and costs $5.49. In our opinion, there were too many flavors going on at once, and it didn't mesh well together. All those things individually, or maybe just two flavors, would have been great, but overall, this one was a little bit too rich and had too much happening. There's a new seasonal lunchbox tart at Woody's Lunchbox in Toy Story Land. This one is a chocolate hazelnut filled lunchbox tart frosted with spooky vanilla icing. That's Disney's word for it. It's just purple. Halloween sprinkles and candy corn for $4.29. So if the words Nutella and candy corn make you or your kids come running, then be sure to put your mobile order in at Woody's Lunchbox. But if you're not a big fan of chocolate or have a nut allergy, this is going to be one to skip on your next trip. Now we got a fudge filled cupcake. This spooky dessert is a fudge filled chocolate cupcake topped with cookies and cream buttercream, spooky sprinkles, and a vanilla meringue ghost for $5.99. The spooky ghost cupcake can be found at two locations in Hollywood Studios, Trolley Car Cafe, AKA Starbucks, and Backlot Express. We thought this cupcake was great. The buttercream on top was perfect for icing lovers. And that little meringue on top was delicious and adorable. And of course it's filled with chocolate fudge. Yay, totally recommend this one. And if you're one of those that love pumpkin spice, this next treat is for you. Also at Trolley Car Cafe, we found the pumpkin mousse, a milk chocolate chai mousse filled with pumpkin bread atop a shortbread cookie with a vanilla buttercream leaf and chocolate stem to garnish. This one might be more of a grown-up treat as it has a more sophisticated flavor palette. It's $5.49. And the caramel apple tart at ABC Commissary. Okay, listen to this one. A spiced caramel cheesecake mousse apple on cinnamon apple tart. So spiced caramel cheesecake mousse on a cinnamon. Okay, there we go. On a cinnamon apple tart. That's what it is. It was hard to get that out, you guys. It reminded us of an apple pie and the apple filling along the bottom paired nicely with the tart's shell. It's one very pretty dessert. We'd recommend this one for big apple pie fans. If you're more of a pumpkin or chocolate lover, then you might want to skip this one. It's $5.49. The cannoli has returned to Pizza Rizzo, so we had to see if it could redeem itself since it hasn't been our favorite in years past. Now, it's a cute cannoli and it's filled with whipped pumpkin mousse. So if you're a pumpkin spice lover, you're probably going to be into it. But if you're a cannoli purist, this shell isn't going to live up to expectations. Ours was pretty soggy. Try it out for yourself for $4.99. Let us know what you think. And now we've got our first Halloween themed cocktail. You can find it in three spots, Oasis Canteen, Sunshine Day Bar, and Animation Bar there at Hollywood Studios. It's called the Sweet Poison. This has coconut rum, blue curacao beverage syrup, rum and pineapple juice, and a lemon wedge in a glow cube for $14. Why is this a Halloween drink? I I don't know. Do you? Yeah, me either. If you like fruity rum drinks where you can't really taste the alcohol, this might be a good fit for you. But if you want something that screams Halloween, this ain't it, even when Disney does get those poison apple glow cubes in stock. Next up is the Misty Whisper. This is at the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge. It's a spooky, boozy cocktail. This limited time drink is made with vanilla vodka, orange flavored triple sec liqueur, orange tangerine syrup, and vanilla ice cream mix costs $16. It definitely tastes like a boozy cream sickle and it had the strongest alcohol taste in comparison to the other fall drinks we had at Hollywood Studios that day. This was by far our favorite Halloween drink so far. And sometimes there's nothing wrong with a simple Disney World snack and the Halloween Mickey Brownie with spooky sprinkles is definitely the definition of simple. If you need a break from all the pumpkin, candy corn, and fall flavors, we think this is a good option. It's just a straightforward tasty Mickey Brownie with some Halloween sprinkles to make it festive. You can grab it for $4.50 at multiple outdoor carts around the park. Now the frozen apple cider has returned. The regular version includes frozen apple cider with green apple popping pearls for $4.99. Get it with Crown Royal Regal Apple Whiskey for $14. You can find it all over Hollywood Studios, including Backlot Express, ABC Commissary, Pizza Rizzo, and Rosie's All-American Cafe. It's tart, but very, very sugary. So good if you need to pick me up sugar rush mid-afternoon in the Florida heat. And another one for my pumpkin spice fans, we've got a sweet and simple pumpkin spice cookie. It's a pumpkin spice shortbread cookie with white chocolate on top, made to look like a pumpkin. While it might sound underwhelming compared to other fall snacks, it satisfied all the cravings. This one is for sure shareable. Goes for $3.99 at Fairfax Fair and Catalina Eddie's. And there's a new Halloween shake at Hollywood Scoops. This one is a candy corn ice cream shake topped with a vanilla cake donut, whipped cream, spooky sprinkles, and candy corn for $9.49. It's very Instagrammable and it was very, very good. The bonus candy corn pieces inside the shake were a great touch. Just be prepared to eat lots of whipped cream, sprinkles, and candy corn, which we think isn't a bad thing, at least this early in the season. Now, most of these treats are around through Halloween, but a few stick around until November 11th. So get all the details over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. 
Now, moving away from those fall and Halloween snacks and onto general food news, we found a new menu hack at Baseline Tap House known for their craft beers. But if beer isn't your thing, we discovered you can actually make your own drinks. Cast members told us they can add any of the liquors they have to the soda on tap or the strawberry lemonade. It's not listed on the menu, but a single shot will make the drink $13 and you can get a double for $15. We paired the Baralito Strawberry Hibiscus Soda with Absolute Citron Vodka. It ended up tasting sort of like a spiked carbonated strawberry lemonade lemonade. Really, really refreshing. And the Boardwalk Bakery has a new treat for the chocolate lovers. This new Mickey Mouse brownie is $4.79 and heavy on the chocolate. It's a rich chocolate brownie covered in chocolate frosting with chocolate Mickey ears on top. There are even mini M&Ms to make it look like Mickey. We wouldn't recommend this treat for anyone who doesn't enjoy super rich, heavy chocolate desserts, but if you love chocolate on chocolate, you'll like this one. Minnie's Halloween Dine is back. Hollywood and Vine in Hollywood Studios has just kicked off the start of this seasonal meal. For the fall season, Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, and Goofy swap their outfits for Halloween costumes. This will be around until Minnie's Holiday Dine starts in early November. Gideon's Bakehouse has added a second hot cookie hour. Yep, that's in Disney Springs. And hot cookie hour is basically when you can get a fresh baked chocolate chip cookie and vanilla ice cream made locally between 7 and 8 p.m. and now also between 2 and 3 p.m. So that's awesome, awesome, awesome. You get two options to get hot cookie hour, just like you get two options to ride Rise the Resistance, eh? Switching gears to the West Coast, Disneyland has a new hot dog of the month. This month's hot dog from Craftsman Bar and Grill at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel is the Buffalo Dog for $12. It's a classic hot dog topped with spicy buffalo chicken tenders, blue cheese crumbles, and a drizzle of ranch dressing. Plus, it comes with fries. Now, we know nothing can beat a Disneyland churro, especially an old favorite like the S'mores churro. Yes, that's right. We spotted S'mores churros at the churro stand near Redwood Creek Challenge Trail in Disney California Adventure. The S'mores churro is a classic one rolled in graham cracker crumbles with chocolate chips and a marshmallow drizzle. You can get it for $6.25. This is a must try if you're heading to Disneyland anytime soon. And dinner and dessert packages are coming to Oogie Boogie Bash in Disneyland. While Disney After Hours Boo Bash has already started in Florida, we are still eagerly awaiting more news about Oogie Boogie Bash, a Disneyland Halloween party in California. Tickets have already gone on sale, but now we know that guests will be able to add a dinner or dessert package to their evening at DCA. Keep in mind that these dinner and dessert packages are only available during the actual After Hours events. And as a reminder, the Oogie Boogie Bash is set to take place on select nights from September 9th through October October 31st. For more details about Oogie Boogie Bash, head to DisneyFoodBlog.com. In merchandise news, we've got Halloween mini ears. The first pair have a spooky but very pretty vibe with an eye-catching orange bow and gray plaid pattern on the ears themselves. The plaid pattern continues down the sides of the ears with the words haunt it in orange. We also found fun new pumpkin ears with faux leather jack-o'-lanterns in place of mouse ears. We spotted them both at the Emporium in Magic Kingdom for $29.99. And Disney Crocs are all the rage right now. We spotted another pair for spooky season. They're all black with a large plaid pattern and of course Mickey-shaped holes on the top. Besides the black, there's not really anything particularly Halloween-y about these shoes, especially compared to last year's Crocs. We also found some Halloween gibbets to decorate your Crocs, which will help them to look more in the fall Halloween spirit. The Crocs are $59.99, the gibbets are $17.99. We found both in the Emporium at Magic Kingdom, along with a ton of other new Halloween merchandise. We spotted Halloween t-shirts and pins, and even new glow-in-the-dark spirit jerseys and Hocus Pocus plushes. There's a brand new lounge fly featuring a glow-in-the-dark oogie boogie, plus loads of kitchen and home goods, keychains, and pre-packaged Halloween treats. Disney's implemented a two-per-item per-guest limit as opposed to the previous 10-per-item per-guest policy, and that applies to everything in the Halloween merchandise release. You can see every single Halloween item we've spotted in the parks over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Now, a limited-time pre-celebration collection of the massive 50th anniversary Disney World merchandise multi-part release, sounds like, like movies, right, has arrived in the parks. Everything in this collection shirts, hats, cups, pins, magic bands, has the 50th anniversary castle logo. Everything's that bright blue color with a little bit of iridescence thrown in. This stuff has been flying off the shelves this week, but you'll find it all over Disney World at World of Disney and Disney Springs, the Emporium and Magic Kingdom, Mouse Gear and Epcot, as long as it stays in stock. Remember, this is just the first wave of 50th anniversary merchandise. There's even more coming in early October. 
Now, if you have no idea what the purple wall is, don't be alarmed. It's a painted wall in Tomorrowland and Magic Kingdom that has become popular on Instagram, and it even has inspired some food and merchandise items like the one we just found. This backpack has a silver Mickey charm on the front zipper pocket, and the purple wall design extends to the side pockets as well as on the back. The inside lining is more purple wall inspiration with some hidden Mickeys as well. We found it in Hollywood Studios for $75. But this one has been tough to keep in stock. Let's talk Haunted Mansion. Disney's released a new Haunted Mansion jewelry collection from designer Betsy Johnson. From what we saw, the collection consists of three pieces, including hat box ghost earrings. There was also an ornate Madame Leota necklace with earrings to match. If you're wanting to add these to your collection, we suggest swinging by Bayview Gifts at Disney's Contemporary Resort sooner rather than later, as these collections do tend to sell out very quickly. And the new Cruella de Vil, Dooney and Burke collection is available now online and at the Marketplace Co-op in Disney Springs or at Discovery Trading Company in Disney's Animal Kingdom. The new line features a classic design of your favorite fur-lined villain with lots of pops of red. We spotted the tote and crossbody bags in store, but so far the domed satchel is only available online. So there's all the news for today, August 14th. Thank you, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, you can join our newsletter. We've got the link down in the description below. You will get daily updates of all the news going on in Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and everywhere Disney. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.